Greetings shippers, welcome back, and it's post Voltron season 7, and that means it's time for a lot of updates, but as promised, we're gonna start with Shadam, because this has been a fascinating ride. And yes, I know, a lot of people wish it was called Dashi or wish, depending upon your viewpoint after seeing this season. So we did a pre-season seven video about the rise of Shadam, and I was fortunate enough to be able to partner with Amino for that video. And I am happy to say that I'm partnering with them yet again for this one. Amino Apps is this wonderful service where you can create a fan community for pretty much anything probably it already exists, and if not, then you can make it. And the Voltron Amino is one of the largest and most active, and it definitely has some very passionate, fun people on it. I'm often lurking on this Amino, and you can follow me at Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. There are so many fun things you can do on this app and in this community. Some of my favorites, as you probably guessed, are looking at all of the beautiful fan art. On our last video, we had a little contest for fan art, and it was so exciting to be able to engage with you guys in that way. I'm also a huge fan of the polls and quizzes, and all of the random fun fandom stuff that just occurs. For example, here's a crack ship competition. For sometimes you just wanna show a little love to a crack ship. If this sounds like a good time for you, the app is 100% free and you can download it on iOS or Android. The link will be in the description and the comments down below. I got a bunch of beautiful submissions for this contest. Thank you so much for everyone who entered and I'm gonna be happy to share as many as I can in this video. Before we get started, a quick note for if you're new here. On this channel, we examine everything from all sides. This is gonna be a multifaceted examination of the situation. If that sounds like your cup of tea, please stay tuned. So with all of that said, let's talk about Shadam and everything that has happened post season seven, which means of course, if you are not caught up, spoilers. In the lead up to the season of Voltron, there was a lot of fan and expectations that were placed upon this ship and a lot of excitement over what exactly was going to occur when these characters did indeed meet. And indeed a lot of opinions were already formed, not only about what should happen, but about other fans, depending upon how they felt about this pairing. So suffice it to say, a lot of people found this season to be anticlimactic. For a lot of what people expected to occur, it did not occur or depending upon how cynical one was, it was exactly what they expected. So once again, spoilers, this is your last chance to get out if you do not want to know anything about season seven. It appears at the time of this recording that Adam is no longer with us, that indeed he did not survive the Galra siege. Now, some people hold out hope as other characters appear to have perished, but then turned out to be all right. So some feel that this may be the fate for Adam and that perhaps they will have the wonderful fan and reconciliations that they were hoping for. However, others feel that this is exactly what they expected to happen, that indeed, Adam was fridged as it were, and that he was dangled in front of the fandom, and indeed many people feel baited, or that this is a continuation of the baiting that they already feel that Voltron partakes in. So all that has occurred this season has very much intensified these accusations of baiting, with the hashtag Voltron Legendary Queerbait floating around Twitter, especially as the couple were featured in the trailer and there was such a discussion about them at Comic-Con. Hence, whether intentional or not, they were used to promote the show. And some feel that the creators should have known that this would happen, as the feelings surrounding this practice are not unknown. Many Many feel that this was clearly an attempt to encourage a new demographic to watch this show and to garner support from those who were already there and hoping for this kind of representation. And others feel that if this was not the intention, then the reveal was mishandled and that perhaps the Shiro announcement should have stood on its own and that no information about Adam should have been given out and that perhaps he should indeed have retained his original role as Shiro's roommate. Some have even gone so far as to question why some of the voice actors, particularly Bex Taylor Klaus, fought so hard for this representation if it was going to be so minimal. Outrage has also been fueled in the fact that certain het couples have moments. Some feel more, some feel less. Mileage varies, but either way, it appears that these couples may be headed towards a happy ending. With some feels, returns to the cycle of certain plots being favored over others. Though some feel there is still a whole season left to go, and that really everyone needs to wait and see what happens, and that perhaps people could be pleasantly surprised. Now, as always, mileage will vary, especially depending upon what value one was placing on this pairing. As mentioned in the first part, there are a variety of different investments that people were placing into this pairing. This includes the show runners and actors who appear to have felt that the Shiro announcement stood independent of his past relationship with Adam. With Bex Taylor Klaus responding to queerbait accusations by saying, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't view it as queerbaiting. Just because it's not a happy ending doesn't make it less of a representation. Sure, it'd be great to give Shiro a win, but that's not how war works. A response that some agree with and others found dismissive. All in all, however, for some, there is a great deal of concern for the showrunners and actors in this situation as the vitriol heading towards them is quite intense in some corners. And some feel 
that regardless of how one feels about Adam and Chatham, that that is completely unacceptable. Now, there are some who do not mind this development, as they feel that the fandom was perhaps placing too much importance upon Adam, especially before he had even arrived, and that really all that the reveal showed was that this was a part of Shiro's past, and that hence it should be taken as such, like any other past reveal for any other character. It is meant to grow their character development and not necessarily going to be a large part of the plot. For this season of Voltron was indeed very plot-centric. It brought to the fore and tied up a lot of the elements that it had been building to, some since the beginning. However, because of this, for certain fans, this represented a tonal shift, or at least was not what they were watching the show for. For this was not the most character development heavy season. Instead, it was a lot more action driven, especially for the latter half. While there were moments, they were very brief. Something which some attribute to the pacing and others to the genre. As some feel that this season truly showcases that this show never truly meant to cultivate the type of fan base that it did, and that the surprise they express about it may indeed be genuine. And as a result, some more transformative fans feel a bit adrift after this season, not exactly sure how they feel about it, especially certain shippers, as many feel that this season was bereft of shippable moments. However, other shippers feel that really there were moments for everybody, all of the ships, even the ones that are currently more maligned, and that indeed they feel the level hasn't actually changed, as many feel that there is not as much shipping fodder in the show as certain people seem to think. Indeed, some have gone to ponder whether the fandom created some of its own baiting problems, not specifically this one in particular, but some surrounding other pairings such as Clance, and that rumors of moments and misconstrued interviews spread through the fandom like wildfire, and are part of what has created a very volatile environment, while others feel that this is very disingenuous, and that it is the creative staff who have consistently mishandled communications, and gotten hopes up without realizing how much of an impact it has on certain fans, and also the impact on canon, as everything that these creators do is observed, from liking tweets or fan art, or certain fan opinions and statements. And some feel that it may be likely that there is a certain level of creator frustration that is beginning to play out with interactions with the fandom, as all decisions, not just this one, seem to cause significant fan backlash. Some feel that there may be a sense that the Voltron crew feels damned if they do, damned if they don't, that disappointment will reign no matter what direction the show goes in. Though some argue that in this case, the backlash was very foreseeable. Which brings us to an interesting discussion, especially when it pertains to Shadam. As mentioned already, a lot of Shadam was built up in Fanon, which it necessarily had to be, as they had not appeared yet, and yet they had been announced at Comic Con. Which is something that is not uncommon for the Voltron fandom. Not announcements like this, but the fact that a lot of the information that certain shippers draw upon to fuel their ships comes from these extra behind the scenes materials. Now, there are many different types of shippers, and indeed many different ways that people view canon. There are some that feel that canon is what is presented in the text on screen, in the book, or whatever medium that the text is being presented in. And that any additional information, while it can be added to one's personal lexicon or used to fuel, say, a ship or some kind of theory, that is in some ways either less important or less valid, as some feel is a way for creators to cover all of their bases and perhaps address issues that they forgot about or did not sufficiently implant in the text. While others feel it is just a valid and great way for fans and creators to interact and expand the lore, and indeed necessary for fans have grown used to that kind of instant communication and access with the creators of their favorite material, and are often the first to ask for more information surrounding their favorite characters and the lore of these shows. This is why a lot of announcements made outside of series come to be viewed as pandering. It's also why there can be a lot of confusion surrounding certain ships, especially in Voltron, as a lot of people will selectively take what certain actors or creators say and then apply it to their ship. And in many instances, it becomes a game of broken telephone. As for certain interviews, there are clear videos or clear statements or interviews that connote exactly what happened and where it occurred and when. However, other claims are more tenuous or nebulous, moments that perhaps were not filmed or transcripts that were not complete. As a result, many of the creators and actors feel misconstrued. And it has occurred a lot that information is twisted, be it purposefully or by accident, as it can become difficult to track down exactly who said what, when, and how accurate it is. As many times one will say track down the source of a confirming shipping comment, only to find that that was not what the actor said at all, or in fact that it was said by somebody else, or that it pertained to another scene. And this can occur even when people are trying their best to be careful. So it happens even more frequently when someone wants to believe what is being said, and as a result takes many statements at face value. As some feel it is always necessary to maintain a healthy level of skepticism when listening to any statement, especially a quasi-promotional one. This loops back to Shadam, as some feel that certain fans took the statements that were made a bit too literally. However, fans are quick to counter that it is the creative staff who placed that emphasis there. This leads some towards the theory that indeed he will return and they will get their moments, and others feel that they could 
could not have placed less emphasis on him because if they had, they would have been accused of homophobia or of not giving the relationship the gravity and weight it deserved. Again, mileage varies, as some feel that Adam should have lived. At the very least, whether the characters got back together or not had a sequence with Shiro, while others feel the weight was indeed given by his death and the impact that it has on Shiro, which was something that was detailed, again, in extra interviews by the actors. As a result, some are viewing this Shadam incident as some are referring to it as an example, or at least a microcosmic example, of how difficult the Voltron fandom has become to navigate for both creators and fans, and that a lot of what occurs around these statements, especially surrounding Shiro, and hence by osmosis Adam and Shadam, is built upon this fear of offending the fan base, a fan base that has proven to be very volatile. And while there are of course wonderful fans who create wonderful things and who are accepting of Voltron, flaws and all, there are others who are very quick to attack. And this incident, while understandably upsetting for many, has brought out the worst in a lot of fans. And as a result, one can see that a lot of the statements are made over and over again, very carefully, and leaving a lot of things open. And even with that, as one has seen, shippers are still being attacked and being called disingenuous. And of course, as always, as it is Voltron, there are still some statements that appear to contradict each other, or one that says one thing and implies one meaning, and one that implies another. Some feel that this highlights another thing we have talked about before on this channel, that being that perhaps cast and crew all need to get on the same page with what they are going to say. Or that when one is dealing with a fandom that is so volatile, perhaps it is necessary to either take a step back or hire some kind of fandom expert or PR person before one makes statements. However, others feel that this should not be necessary. However, many are riled up because they find that what happened with Adam is an extension of the kill your gays trope, or that LGBT plus characters cannot be happy or have a happy ending, and that for what Shiro means and represents, he has to have a happy ending, and many feel that it has to be with Adam as they do not support other Shiro pairings. Which of course highlights the fact that some feel that there are other Shiro ships coming and that he will get his happy ending, just potentially not with Adam. And of course, others feel that he does not need to be with anybody. A twist on the strong independent woman trope, simply the strong independent man who don't need no man trope. However, others feel that him ending up alone would be an extension of the kill your gays trope. Just a further demonstration that LGBT plus people cannot have happy relationships and must end up alone. Which of course sets off fans who feel that a character does not need to be in a relationship to be strong. And others feel that this is not an extension of this trope and simply the plot carrying out and that Shiro's relationship with Adam was done and that this moment, while sad, does not represent what many people are trying to make it represent. And that indeed, Adam, like many side characters, is simply experiencing the fate of the foil. That being being used to bolster something about the main character. A fate of many side characters, regardless of gender, sexuality, age, or race. However, which appears to be the word of this video, there are others who feel that given the history of this trope in play, whether that was the intention or not, that that is what is occurring. While of course others feel that the only way towards equal narratives is to have narratives play out the same as they would for everybody, and that that means that the hero must have a tragic backstory and a long lost love. A notion some of course reject is they feel until these representations become more common, certain narrative tropes should be laid to the wayside, at least for now. And all of this has forced the creators to respond, with Joaquim Dos Santos writing an open letter to the fandom, a letter which Lauren Montgomery later commented upon. In the letter, Joaquim says this, From our POV, despite having Shiro and Adam split, we knew seeing a familiar face bravely making the sacrifice along with the squadron he led and countless others would help get across the gravity of this invasion. We were aware of the barrier gaze trope, but hoped against hope that our struggle to confirm Shiro's orientation would take center stage here. We had not intended for Adam to be interpreted as a recurring character or someone that would come back into Shiro's life. That is not me attempting to turn this around and place the burden of expectation on anyone. This is not an excuse. We crafted this entire series around the themes of sacrifice and loss, and at the end of the day, had to take responsibility for our creative decisions. We knew people would be affected by the loss of Adam. We just could not have predicted how profound that loss would be. He goes on to express a great many other sentiments, just about the creation of Voltron in general, the war of plot against fan expectations, and why him and the other creators lay low at times like this. It's a very fascinating, but a long read, so of course, I'll link it down below. He also does speak out against the fandom as tactfully as possible, stating, on the flip side of this, I do have to express my concern for how some in the fandom have chosen to express their frustration and who that frustration is being directed towards. It goes without saying that aggressive behavior 
non-verbal or otherwise is just not doing anyone any good. Taking out frustration warranted or otherwise on staff and slash or performers on the show is not the answer. Do they work on the show? Yes. Are they integral to the show's high levels of fidelity? Absolutely. Are they involved in the story making decision process? No. I'd also like to add that each and every one of them has been a champion for inclusivity and acceptance, so I promise they're on your side. We're all human and we all get emotional and at times we all lash out, but there is a much more constructive path to delivering that message than through aggressive behavior. On shipping, they had this to say. With regards to romance slash relationships moving forward in the VLD universe and without getting too spoilery, we've said from the beginning of this show that we did not intend for romance to be a major aspect of the series. That's not to say it won't be present. Heck, with seven eight episodes, it's virtually impossible. Characters evolve, grow closer, are seen, and begin to see others in a new light, etc. But I urge anyone rooting for one ship or another to not hang their hopes on that singular aspect of the show, as I truly believe you run the risk of missing all the other really amazing things the show has to offer. That being said, don't let me saying that stop you from shipping these characters till the cult neckers come home. Laurent Montgomery added her own words, saying, We realize some of you are hurting. It was never our intention. We realize some of you feel baited. It was never our intention. We appreciate you, and I swear we have fought a hard battle for you. There's so much I would do differently, but so little we could have done differently. We wanted so badly to be able to represent you meaningfully. We didn't mean to let you down. Voltron has been a huge learning experience for me, one I will never forget. We cannot undo what has been done, but we love and respect every single one of you, and despite it all, I'm so happy to have been able to have our character, who has persevered through the most, never lost sight of what was important, represent the LGBTQ community. Lauren. Which of course leads some to postulate that perhaps what is playing out is a form of trope fatigue, that people want to see different stories playing out in different ways, which some would argue is not exactly what one gets from Voltron. As however one feels about Voltron, positive or negative, it is a very trope heavy show, and has always been that way since its inception. So of course it must be asked, how did you feel about this season of Voltron? Some people felt it was the best yet, some the worst, and some are on the fence and not exactly sure how they feel about it. Of course it must be asked, do you feel that that Shadam is dead, that this is the end of it. Of course, like any other ship, some feel that they can keep it alive, as a character being dead or potentially dead does not negate whether a ship can or cannot happen, though many mourn this ship's potential canonicity, especially as it feels for many that it came so close. Which is a completely separate argument, as whatever the fandom, some will argue that canon is more important, and others will argue that while it does make an impact, fanon can stand on its own. Again, when it comes to shipping in Voltron, has this season that definitely canonically focused less on character development and ships highlighted that a good portion of the audience is not watching for the Voltron lore, but is instead watching for these shippable moments or other factors. And if so, what are your feelings about that? And of course, what is your Voltron ship? And did this season have moments for you? Let me know all of your feelings down below and thank you again for all of your wonderful, beautiful art. And for those who feel salty, I wore the Salt Squad shirt because everybody feels salty about something. And sometimes, one just wants to live in that salt for a moment. There are more Voltron videos on the way because there is a lot to talk about, especially surrounding Shiro, just Shiro ships for days. Sheath update, Shalora video, Alarance, which does not have to do with Shiro, but still, there's a lot more Voltron coming, spaced out, because there are so many ships that we have to talk about from so many different fandoms. So I'm hoping that you will stay tuned and join me for that. Follow on social media if you haven't already so you can stay up to date with what we're doing next, and of course keep up with when we're streaming and all kinds of random fandom chit chat. It's a good time, I swear. Subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, please hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid, for the vids here are constant, varied, and sporadic. As always, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it here chatting about fandom and shipping with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon, and for now, let's get to that outro. Bye-bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side. There are, as always, new videos coming soon, so stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.